Okay, so I've, I've skipped past making the top, um, just because it's exactly the same process as making the side and the front. Um, um, all I've done is added um, a little bit of a key-shaped object to make it feel like this is a wind-up object that you could you could play with. Um, and we're going to create the head, so I've just created a, another quad cylinder. Um, just moved it up, and I'm just rotating. Extruded the top faces out, I'm just rotating them around. Let's extrude them out again. Rotate them around uh, in world space. Extrude them in. Just and scale them in. Um, select a couple of the edge loops and scale them up. Just to get that that kind of head shape and neck shape. Okay, just moving. Just playing around with the points. Just getting the right basic shape before we start going into any detail. Um, if you're not happy with the shape, you know you've got to sort it out before you start playing with detail because it gets very very tricky to do. Um, I'm just selected um, those four faces and just extruded them in, and they're going to be the basis of the the eye. So we've got a nice loop around them now. And again, I'm just going to scale these corner points in and just start moving them around just to get the right shape that I want for the eye. And again, just trying to make sure that the the overall mesh is still quite smooth. Then I'm going to extrude those polys in. And I've just added a couple more edge loops just because I'm not quite getting the shape that I want. Um, I want the, the corners to be quite tight and then to open out quite quickly. Okay, so now I've just added a couple of those more edge loops. And I'm just gonna, now I'm going to extrude those faces in to give us a nice loop. And then extrude those faces in towards the head. And again, just flatten it just because it'll make it easier to add extra objects and extra geometry in if that's a flat surface. Okay, and I'm still just manipulating the points. Again, making sure that the the mesh is nice and smooth and tidy. And the eye is the exact shape I want before I go any further. Okay, and again, I've just created a cog. And I, again, I'm not going to go through that because we, we created one in the in the first video and it's exactly the same process and it's exactly the same design. So I'm not going to go through that. If anything, it's a little more basic. Um, so I'm creating one major cog for the eye and then just duplicating a whole load of smaller ones around it. Um, again, just a nice little touch of detail. And it'll just... Um, They'll just all catch nice, nice highlights and reflections again. And um, because that surface is flat as well that we extruded in for the eye, we can just move uh, these duplicates in the x and y axes, and you know it'll be flat against the surface. So I'm just trying to find a nice, a nice order for them all to go in, and, and still kind of, kind of work. So they all still kind of fit together a little bit. Just scale a couple of them down and maneuver. Then what we're going to do when we've when we've done this um, is start obviously grabbing a bit more geometry and adding a bit more more detail outside that. So I'm going to grab the loop that we created in the eye and create another board there, which is exactly like we did with the with the side and the front and the, the extrusions we made into those. Okay, so there we go, we've added all those cogs. I'm just going to select that loop, hit duplicate faces, and then we've got a separate object. That again, we can just pull out and just extrude out. I've just selected the outer edge, and I've just made it a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. And I'm just going to extrude that object out. I'm just manipulating the uh, the verts a little bit just to make sure they're smooth against the head. Okay, and you want to get these kind of things done while it's it's still low poly before you add too many details. And then I'm just adding a, a couple of edge loops. I was thinking about adding an edge loop just to add a bit of height to it, but it didn't really look look okay. So I just added a couple of edge loops just to tighten those corners. I think that looks quite nice. So again, I'm just tweaking the points just to make sure it sits nice and tight against the against the head, and everything's covered. 
And we'll look at the front, and again, I'm just going to extrude those four polys in at the front just to give us another loop. So you can hide everything else there. And um, we're going to add um, another edge loop just along the, the top of that center line that goes through the eye, just so that we can take these faces and hit duplicate faces to give us a piece of geometry that will run from the corner of the eye through to where the beak will be. And again, we just need to manipulate the points. And we can take that edge loop out later on if we need to, but it's just nice to be able to, to generate objects and to generate geometry based off another mesh um, and to manipulate that first mesh in order to create secondary geometry. Okay, so again, we're just going to extrude that. I'm just going to scale these uh, these front verts in just because it felt a little bit wide. And I'm going to extrude those faces in again, creating a nice loop, and then extrude it in for the mouth. Then we can select the loop that we created. And again, just hit duplicate faces, and we've got a nice border for the for the join between the head and the beak as well. Okay, and then we can just maneuver these points around so these two fit together nicely. And again, it's just about precision, it's just about making everything fit together nice and cleanly, nice and tidily. Okay, I'm just going to duplicate the faces on the inside of the mouth now, and we're going to use the beak to, I'm going to use those to create the beak. Okay, so I've made them into two different pieces. I'm just going to extrude them out and just reshape them. So I'm just going to scale them in on the Z and on the Y. There we go, just to make it a little bit. More like a beak, just extrude it out again, and just scale it right down. And do the same on the bottom. Um, but obviously, for, for most birds, the, the bottom half of the beak doesn't quite reach the end of the of the top part, so just, just bear that in mind when you're when you're building building a beak. Um, and I'm just going to straighten a couple of those edges out, just a little bit curved. Add a couple of edges up. Oh. Just going to pull the two bits of geometry out. And I'm just going to use the interactive split tool um, just to go across that back face and then delete that center line, just so it gives us back and we can just extrude that out. And add a couple of edge loops to tighten it up. Line it inside. And again, try to keep that with not too many harsh corners in there. Okay, I'm going to do the same on, on the bottom. Just going to use the split poly tool and then just delete part of that center line. And take them Tighten those edges up. Okay, fantastic. Now what we're going to do is let's just start just tweaking the uh, tweaking the beaks to make sure the corner looks quite right. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to start building the kind of plated armor around the uh, around the head. So just make a cube, just rotate it around. And I'm just manipulating the shape just to get it a little bit more like a like a triangle. Just want. To Just 
tweaking the points. Okay. The edge loops draw the edges out and keep it. And again. Make sure you're getting it. And then the last. Just duplicating it and moving it around the eye. And again, it's all a Looks, you know, looks aesthetically pleasing as well. We want to make sure the bottom half of the face is entirely covered. Underneath it, we're going to leave the top of it blank. Okay. And then moving the rest of the points based on based on where that that they need to be, and just fixing everything else from there. And I'm just going to attach these. To, to the corner of that eye border geometry again. Just making sure they've all got a nice nice relationship to each other, all these verts and they're all facing the right direction and heading in the right direction. There's no awkward bumps and bounces and divots. Okay, now I'm just going to create a plane, rotate it around, and again, just just get those top two points sorted first. I'm just going to rotate those bottom verts round, extrude the edge out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, numerical inputs and just make sure that's zero on the on the z-axis because that's the the center line. And then we can we can mirror this piece of geometry. Then uh, so that's exactly what we're going to do. And um, we're just moving the pivot to the to the center. So I've just used them. Um, a transform command which is x form uh, flag world space flag pivots and then hit zero 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 just to center the pivot and I'm just deleting the history and freezing the transforms on this uh, on this plane as well and then there we go when we when we mirror it we've got a nice a nice kind of chin guard so I'm just gonna add an edge loop uh, select the faces and extrude them just to add a nice little bit of depth, and again another nice little bit of detail. But will add nice highlights, nice shadows, uh, and then a couple of edge loops just to keep those corners nice and tight. And a couple down the bottom to make the the bottom corner nice and pointy. And I'm just going to duplicate that object, move it back, move it down, 
Now, and I've gone into the tool settings here, and I'm just going to turn reflection on, just because we know it's it's mirror geometry, so we know it'll get the reflection right, and that just means we only have to worry about one side, and Maya will just sort the other side out for us. So I'm just tweaking the object, moving all these points, again, just making sure that everything's in the right place, everything's covered. You can't see any of the joins. And all I've done is I've just duplicated that and done exactly the same all the way. I've just done that another four times. And now what we're going to do is we're going to select a couple of faces and do exactly the same on the back side of the eye that we did on the front side. Um, just hit duplicate faces and just create a picture geometry that goes from the back corner of the eye down towards the neck. So again, it's just keeping the, keeping the points, making sure they're in the right place. And then when we're happy with it, just selecting the object and extruding. I'm just extruding um, in world space on the, on the Z just to pull them all out in the same direction. Just adding an edge loop there as well just to tighten that edge up. I'm just going to pull that a little bit closer up because what we're going to do is we're going to create um, some pieces of neck geometry as well and that's going to come from the from the actual neck so we're just pulling that join further up a little bit okay and then we can duplicate that last chin guard um, and again move the points and again it's just about precision it's just about making sure that everything is in the right place it's as close as it can to can be to the, the other piece of geometry that it's supposed to meet. Um, I couldn't quite get that that uh, edge loop to, to work, so I've just moved it onto the next one. Well, I'm just going to insert an extra edge loop in there. Just to make the... Okay, so we're going to select the ring of faces on the back of the neck now. Um, and we're just going to hit some different faces again. And we're just going to manipulate the shape into uh, along the bottom there and just extrude the faces out again just to give a nice little bump nice little bit of detail on the bottom of the of the armor now when we create the join between the eye and the beak obviously we had that edge loop that was in there that we used to create that geometry I'm just deleting that it just hardens up that corner just make it nice and round so I'm just deleted that I just duplicated the object and I'm just reshaping the next one now as well. Just scaling out the, the verts on the bottom bottom end. And again, we'll just duplicate it, scale it. And we're doing it with line, so we are gonna have to change this when we see the see the rest of the body, as you can see. So if we just select all these pieces of the neck, I'm just gonna scale them in. But again, you know, the, the relationship between the geometry ahead of them hasn't changed, so I'm just gonna hide that one for now. I'm just gonna group all of the pieces of the head together and just move it as a group just to get it into the right place. And then we can manipulate the uh, the neck once we know exactly where the head's gonna go. 